Amen. God bless you this evening. Would you please stand? Amen. We're going to ask uh, Jonah to pray to open up the service. Please bow your heads. Never far, thank you for this day. Bless this um, service in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You ready to worship? We can't start unless I hear an amen. Amen. Okay, the girls on three. One, two, three. Amen. Okay, the boys. One, two, three. Amen. I'll give you another chance later. It's the B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand upon the B I B L E. It's the B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand upon the word of God, the B I B L E. It's the B I brought their Bibles. All right. Hey Amen. Let's sing that song, This Little Light of Mine. How many have their lights? You got your light? Thank you for letting us all be here today and this offering we're about to pick up. Bless it. And we ask this in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Can we give him one? How, how many are ready to hear a fine preacher? Ooh, forget it. We might as well go home. Okay, let's try the boys. Are you ready to hear a fine preacher? All right, this guy, he comes from the depths of the sea. 
but I'm not telling you who it is. But with, with this, what? Who told you? <laughs> well, with this song, we're going to be introducing our, our brother to surprise, so you'll have to guess who it is. Well, Jesus is mine, mine, mine. Should have came in something a little nicer. But I that's all I had, so. Anyway, you guys could be seated. Oh, but this this chair here. You guys know. I've been at the depths of the sea for three days, three nights. I think there's a Brother Angelo in here. Can I have Brother Angelo come up? Can you please all bow your heads? Dear Lord, gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you asking that you can be with us today, Lord. I ask that you can just send your nose down to camp around each and every one of us, Lord. Lord, I ask that you can bless the children and I ask that you can give me a good good message to give to them today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. That was a fine prayer. Um, I ask that you can open your Bibles to Isaiah 53.5. Whenever you have it, can you say Amen. But he was wondered for our transgressions, and he was br- sorry. He was bruised for our iniquities. The c- c- translation of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Before I begin, I would like to thank the Lord and all my brothers and sisters for praying for me. And I, I, I just got out of my, you know, recent surgery in my throat. I would like to talk about God's healing power today. 
how how many here believe in healing amen god has god has god ever healed you god is the only one who can heal not a man only god whenever i was just a baby i was sick and ended up in the hospital for a couple of weeks. I was born with a disorder called the Meckles de Particulum, which means a the end of my stomach and my and the beginning of my intestines were knotted up together, causing a blockage and was deadly. My mom didn't find out until I was 10 months old. The doctor who diagnosed me said one in a million people were diagnosed with this disorder every year. I w was rushed to El Paso Children's Hospital and immediately un underwent s to surgery and I and to remove the knot. A few days later, the in, in it where they fixed it up, it reopened, and I and on the inside, and again I underwent surgery to close it back up. And so you can put up the pictures up there for me. The next one. That kid right there, he was good looking even though he was sick. <laughs> I'm thankful to the Lord for completely healing me from that. To this day, I have never suffered from that disorder. See, so sometimes we get sick so God can manifest his glory. But we were all born sick because the Bible tells us that we are born in sin and shaped in, 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 I'm sorry, in quinity and that we come into the world speaking lies. So we need God to heal us. It didn't, it doesn't matter how good you are, we still need Medicine, which is God in our hearts. In Second Kings 5, there was a character in the Bible named Na Na Naaman, and he too was sick. He was sent to Elisha, the prophet. A prophet is the mouthpiece of God. The prophet sent him to instructions for his healing, but when he heard the instructions the prophet sent him, he was angered because he was not expecting to what, to hear that. He was, he went, he he was wanting his miracle. But God would rather heal his children than give them a miracle because a miracle, it, 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 you know, you don't have to believe God does it. And healing, it take, it, you have to believe in it in order for you to get healed. So that's what... Man, on had to do to receive his healing. That's what we have to do is believe, and that's what gives us character. Can you put on the quote that I asked for? He can only pervert what God has created. Satan has no way to create. There's only one. Creator. 
creator, that's God. Satan couldn't heal, medicine couldn't heal. There's nothing else can heal but God because he's the only creator. And anybody that's intelligent would know enough to know that there is not a medicine or a drug or nothing in the world that can create life. God is the only solemn one and in creation alone. So he said, I am the Lord that heals all of thy diseases. Thank you and God bless you. Now, I need all of the little children. If they could come up and sit right around here, it's going to be story time with Jonah. All righty. Perfect. You guys all fit perfect. Careful, don't want to fall. Alrighty, I pretty much just gave it away, but how many of you can guess who I am? Jonah? Jonah? Jonah's right. My name is Jonah, and I'm the son of Amittai. Does anyone here know my story? Have you guys heard my story before? Yeah? You have my story. My book. I wrote a book. Wow. Okay. Well, to start, I am a prophet of the Lord. But there's something different about me than all the other prophets. And we're going to get into that a little bit here. I'm here to share with you my experience, what I went through, some pretty nasty things. It smelled really fishy for three days and three nights. I did. So, to start, there was a day when God's voice came to me. And he said, Jonah, I have a job for you to do. There's a city called Nineveh. And their wickedness. How many knows what wickedness is? Bad, evil. Yeah, exactly. So he said, this city is wicked and it's come up before me. I need you to go and cry out against it. This city was full of people doing bad things. Instead of serving God, all they wanted to do was watch TV or play video games or talk back to their parents. Yeah? Does that sound familiar? No? Oh, I, I thought so. I thought. It does sound familiar? Oh. Exactly, yeah. Okay, and my only job, my only job, it was simple, was just to go cry out against it. Sorry, my mustache keeps falling. <laughs> That's simple, right? If God calls you to cry out against something, doesn't that sound so simple? Yeah. Okay, Lord, I'll cry out against it. But children, I made a great, great mistake. I mean, those my mistake that I made. Oh, I didn't want to go. That's exactly right. I did. So, I fled from the presence of God. When I heard his voice, I just, I couldn't do it. I said, no, Lord, I can't do it. And I found a ship that was leaving this place. So I even paid money. Yeah, I paid money to get on this ship and I left. I don't want to be nowhere near the presence of God. Yeah, I did. But kids, let me tell you something very, very true. If you remember anything from this story, remember this. If you ever do anything wrong, 
you talk bad about someone or you do maybe something you're not supposed to do, just remember, until you make it right, you'll never be able to run away from it. Take it from me. I tried running from the Lord, but it didn't work. Yep, exactly. He knows everything and he always sees you because he's God. That's right. So God knew exactly where I was. And he made sure to get a hold of me. Does anyone here have their Bible? Yeah? Okay. Yes. <laughs> no, I didn't have fun. <laughs> okay, do you want to read for me Jonah 1.4? Do you want to read it out of mine? You want to read it out of mine? One, four, right there. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a might, mighty um, tempest in the sea. So the ship was like to be broken. Yes, sir, that's right. So what happened was, to get a hold of me, the Lord knew who I was. I was on this ship. I fled. I paid money to get out of there. And I was being disobedient. So the Lord, he sent a mighty wind. And these winds were strong. I was in the middle of the ocean. The waves, as tall as this building, maybe even taller, Everything was just going mad. The ship was getting full of water. It was going to sink. Everyone was grabbing everything they can to throw it off of the ship so it wouldn't sink. But guess where I was at the whole time? I was sleeping at the bottom of the ship. That doesn't sound too good, huh? No. Yeah, that doesn't sound. There were sharks. I, I bet there were sharks in there. So, when I was asleep, the captain of the ship he came down to where I was. He said, hey, you sleepyhead. Call upon your God so he can remember us and we can be saved. Yeah, and I woke up and the, the crew found out and they started asking me questions. Said, What's your job? When did you even get on this ship? Where am I from? Whose people do you belong to? So I stood up and I said, I'm a Hebrew. And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, the same one that created this sea and the dry land. And I told them that I was running from his presence. And when I did, they all got really scared. They knew, hey, you don't mess with the Lord Jesus. Mm -mm, you don't mess with God. And I said, why did you do this? What could we do to make the, the, the ocean and the seas and the winds, what can we do to make them calm down so we don't get hurt? And I stood up and I said, throw me into the waters. This is all my fault because of me, you all might die. But throw me overboard and the, the waters will calm down. You see, it was me that God wanted. God didn't want any of them or he wasn't after any of them, but he was after me. Yeah, do any of you guys have siblings at home? Like brothers and sisters? Yeah. You have a brother? So let me ask you a question. When you get in trouble at home, sometimes does it make your brother and sister get in trouble too? Yeah? When you do something bad and then your brother or sister winds up in the mess too? Yeah. And I remember when I was... Little. Yeah, my parents would spank me, and then my sister and my brother would cry too, just because I was crying. So that's what happened here. I got in big trouble. And because of my disobedience, and because of me not wanting to listen to God, everyone else around me was in the same mess. And I don't want that. Do you guys want your brothers and sisters to be in trouble with you all the time? 
No. So they casted me into the water, and immediately the water stopped, calmed down. The waves just fell. Everything was calm. But before they casted me in, we know by Brother Branham that they tied my ankles, they bound me by my feet, they bound me by my hands, and then they threw me into the water. And we weren't on the shore by a beach with ice cream cones on the side. I was in the middle of the ocean. No clouds, it was hot. So I started to just float there in the water, and guess what God was doing this whole time? He was creating a fish, a big fish. Yeah, it was like a whale. And this fish, and it came and swallowed me up. You know what, if it, when, when a fish eats, you know what it does after it eats? It digests, and it goes all the way to the bottom, and it just sits there, and it digests whatever it just ate. So that's where I was at. All because I didn't want to listen, I was in the belly of a big fish, a whale, and I was at the bottom of the ocean, pitch black, no light. It was dark, it was cold, it was clammy, and it smelled like fish really bad. I didn't eat no fish. You eat fish? I like fish. <laughs> so I was in the belly of this fish for three days and for three nights. This whole time, just looking around, all I could see was the belly of this fish. So I started to, to feel in my heart. I knew I was wrong. So I started to cry out. I said, Lord, everywhere I look, all I see is the belly of this fish. And I know I've done wrong. Hear, hear my sincerity. Forgive me, Lord. And in my prayer, God heard my sincerity. He heard that, that I knew I was wrong. And I said, but let me look to your holy temple one more time. And I'm looking to his holy temple. And God heard me. He heard my heart. And the fish came back up to shore. And yeah, he threw up. And I guess what came out? I came out of the fish's mouth with all the throw up. So, that was pretty much my story. Not to get into too much details. I don't want to hold you guys too long. But I do have some goodie bags. And I have questions to see if everyone was listening. All right. First question, what did God call me to do? Uh, let's see. To cry out against the city of Nineveh for their wickedness. Good job. There is for you. All right, I have a second question. What was my big mistake, ladies? I said no, and I wanted to run away from him, right? Yeah, good job. There you go. All right, I have a third question for the guys this time. What people did I come from? No. <laughs> Hebrews, good job. There you go. Fourth question for the ladies. What happened after I was thrown into the water? Uh, ate by a whale. Yeah, the seas calmed and I was swallowed by a whale. Good job. There's yours. And for the last and final question. Now, in order 
to answer this question, I have to see, hear you say hallelujah the loudest you can, and then I'll pick you to answer the question, okay? <laughs> All right, at, right after I ask the question, hallelujah, and the loudest one gets the answer, okay? How long was I in the belly of the whale for? <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was great, but I don't think I heard one. I'll give it to you. Three days and three nights. There you go. Well, you know what? For you guys' participation, I have more goodies for everyone. I don't want to leave anyone left out. So, you guys, you guys can go ahead and pass that around to each other. You can pass it around to each other. You guys can get one out of the bag. And while we do that, we just want to recap on the story. So Jonah was a prophet of the Lord, right? And he was called to cry out against what? The wicked city of Nineveh, right? And so what did Jonah do that was wrong? Yeah, he ran away from the presence of the Lord. Exactly. Does anyone know where he was headed to? He was where? Yeah, he was headed to a ship, but he was headed to the city of Tarshish. Okay, so because of Jonah, because of his disobedience, was he the only one that was getting in trouble for it? No, everyone around him was also, right? The whole crew was getting in trouble for him too. How long was he in the belly of the whale for? Three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. All right. How loud can we say hallelujah one more time? Hallelujah! How loud can we say, I love you, Lord Jesus? I love you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, amen. Thank you guys for your participation. There's some right there. Thank you guys for your participation, and God bless you all. My, my, my. How many had fun today? Did you little kids have fun? What did you guys learn? A lot. About Jonah and the big fish? Wow. Look. Look how big that fish was. Would you please stand? And let's sing, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? The little kids love Jesus? I know the big kids love Jesus. Because after this morning, he sure said, Hey, I love you. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because He first loved me, and oh, how I love Jesus. Can you just tell me love Him? Raise your hands to him. Tell him you love him. Oh. Oh. 
give a, the Lord Jesus a hand clap of praise. And to God's servant, thank you, Brother Angelo. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you, Jonah. Can you say thank you, Jonah? Thank you, Jonah. Thank you, Brother Sam. Now, how many's got a, a, their flag for the Lord? There is a flag flown high from the castle of the heart. Remember the pastor was saying that where Jesus is in the control room? So the song goes, there is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart. From the castle of my heart. From the castle of my heart. There is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart where the king is in residence there. Can you lift your flag? There is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart. From the castle of my heart. From the castle of my heart. There is
A big hallelujah. A big praise the Lord. And I love you, Jesus. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise because we love him. You may be seated. All right, my brother. You can help me out. Ready to play? Who's ready to play sword? Who brought their Bibles today? Everybody got their Bibles? Because if you don't got your sword, you can't play sword. Who's ready to play sword? Yeah? All right. We're going to do the best of three, and then out of the, the three that we get, we'll do the best. So you can go down and get your sword. You can play. Thank you, Brother Andres. Did such a fantastic job. Thank you, brother. What about the big kids? Did you bring your Bibles? I guess three people brought their Bibles. <laughs> All right, you guys ready? You ready? I don't think you're ready. Are you ready? Tell me you're ready. Oh, shoot. The guys are ready. The girls ready? Yeesh, I think the guys are going to beat you. No? Nah, they're not going to beat you, huh? All right. You guys ready? Psalms 27, 14. Psalms 27, 14. When you get, you got to stand up and say, sword as loud as you can. Oh, she beat you. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Awesome. Give her a hand. You can come up and sit over here. Yeah, right there is fine. All right, you ready? Still got two spots. John 3.16. John 3.16. Stand up. Read it. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Wow, that was wonderful, huh? All right. It's a tricky one. Zephaniah 2.3. Zephaniah 2, 3. Zephaniah 2, 3. Wow. Read it, sister. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek from... Of the earth, which have grow his judgment, seek righteousness, seek meekness, it may be shall ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Wow, amen. Come on, sister. Can we give all our three contestants? Round of applause. All right. You ready? This is one takes the cake. You ready? You ready, Brother Elijah? Sister Serenity? Sister Mariah? Deuteronomy 6.5. Deuteronomy 6.5. E. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thine soul and with all thine might. Amen. Bless, praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, you crack me up, son. Amen. Who had a great time today? 
Big kids, little kids, all kind of kids. Who had a great time today? I did. Thank you, Pastor, for the word, and Brother Angelo, and Brother Sam. Give them a hand clap of praise for God's Amen. servants. Wow, we sure got some love today. Wow, well, we're going to get be ready to dismiss um, the youth and the youth parents. Still have that meeting after church, so be ready. Would you stay for that? So let's, uh, Let us stand as we pray to dismiss. And Brother James, would you come up here and uh, dismiss us with a word of prayer? Would you please bow your heads? Dear Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, thank you for the service in the morning, Lord. It sure was a blessing for all of us, Lord. And the service in the evening, Lord, thank you for it, Lord. So, Lord, may, the, may your presence be with us, Lord, all the days of our lives, Lord. Lord, for this coming week, Lord, help the parents with their work, Lord, and the children while they go to school, Lord. We love you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, this little light of mine.